On this episode of Delivering Marketing Joy, we take a look back at some of the best answers we got on content creation on Delivering Marketing Joy. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. And okay. and so one of the things you've said to me in the past, I've heard you say it a couple different times, is that you're an accidental entrepreneur, which I thought was an interesting term. So what do you mean by that? And, and how has that, you know, what does that mean? Um, I think what, for what it means to me, I never set out to be an entrepreneur, to build a business. Um, I, that was never a goal of mine. Not that I thought I wasn't capable of doing something like that. It just was never something I set out to do. I, I know you're an entrepreneur and I know you you love starting new businesses. That's never been my passion. Um, so I call myself an, an accidental entrepreneur because about four, maybe five years ago, I made the decision that I needed to have much more of an entre entrepreneurial spirit. Mm. And I applied that at work and it helped me be very successful, um, which I'll juxtapose by the next sentence, which I'll say, and then I lost my job. <laughs> so how successful were you, Bill? Um, I actually lost my job due to the company's affiliation with another promotional products company and it was just a lot of redundancies and they didn't need me. So I know I'm good at certain things in, in our industry. I'm very good at sales. I'm very good at management. I'm very good at marketing. But at my level, there's only a certain number of jobs. Mm. And so uh, those jobs don't open every day. Mm. So when I say I'm an accidental entrepreneur, I set out to start Brandivate essentially to find a job. Hmm. I wanted to go – for, through my job search in a very different way. I didn't want to send out resumes. Um, I had not done a good job in the past of sharing myself with the industry. People knew who I was just by the fact that I've been around a while, mm -hmm. but I didn't share my thoughts, my views, my visions. And so I, I decided to build Brandivate, the website, to really be an online resume. And if you go to my website, you could probably see remnants of that still. Um, and it's, you know, when a funny thing happened to me as I was doing that, I used that vehicle as a voice to start writing the blog, mm -hmm. sharing my thoughts out there, not really caring what anybody thought, how they reacted, if they agreed, if they disagreed. And what happened is people started saying, hey, we, we don't have a position for you. We can't afford you full time. We love to partner with you on this project or that project. Mm -hmm. And so it became kind of the self-fulfilling, uh, not self-fulfilling, it, it just kind of became this thing that exploded for me. Um, certainly has helped sustain my family financially. And it's really started developing a growing business. Now, that's not to say if someone came to me and says, hey, look, we have a position for you in this company and it would be something where I felt like I could really apply my passions to and it would be a long-term fit. I would never say no to that. Mm. But but So that's why I say I'm an accidental entrepreneur, if that makes any sort of sense. It makes a I almost of sense. created my own position. So what what's changed along the journey? I mean, have, have, yeah. how, how has that evolved? Well, it's evolved because, it, like I said, it's allowed me to be me. Um, when I worked at larger distributorships, and it's no secret, I worked eight years at Halo. Mm -hmm. I worked three years at Summit Marketing. Um, I, you know, those are other people's companies, mm -hmm. and so I had to certainly fit my views, my mindset to the, make sure they aligned with their goals and objectives. And generally, that that was certainly the case. Yeah. When it became my own thing, you know, there was only me figuring this out. So. I needed to express myself to the industry to get known. So the things that changed, I, I started writing the blog, and I, I hate to go back to that, but I've always used writing as a cathartic tool for me. Um, it's something I enjoy doing. I was actually talking to a good friend this morning and explaining I had a lot of things to write today, and I hate writing on a deadline. When I'm writing for me, never a problem, but when I'm writing on a deadline, it's a challenge. But I digress. So. <laughs> I, I started writing the blog and I started getting reactions 
from the blog. Mm -hmm. I really didn't expect that. And then that evolved to to me doing a lot of speaking in the industry, Mm -hmm. starting with um, small regional shows, then uh, SKUCon, which is a fantastic opportunity. You've been able, you've done it as well. So I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then presenting at Expo. And and you and I have co presented some sessions uh, at Expo. And we're doing it again this coming January. We're co uh, presenting a session at SKUCon in January as well. So it's allowed me to, to not hold back anymore. Mm. I think for so many years, I tried to fit into what I thought people wanted me to be. Mm. And so I would give a fraction of myself. I would certainly do a good job. And I don't think any of my former employers would say I didn't do a good job. And in many ways I excelled. But I think if we had a conversation now that was honest, it would also, it would be, I don't know if Bill was all in. And, and I think that would be a fair assessment. So now I'm, I'm all in and I've learned to be all in by allowing myself to be all in. I don't think I allowed myself to do that before. Um, you know, for a lot of people, whether they're in my industry or as you know, I'm in the promotional products industry, but in any industry, I think it's a challenge that people have where they feel like everybody offers a similar or a same service or product. What advice do you give to people so that they can differentiate themselves? You know, you're only a commodity if you want to be a commodity. And if you are talking about, quote, differentiating yourself, you've started from the place of, A, I define myself by my competition. How do I differentiate myself from them? And B, I'm in a commodity business. Neither of those things is true if you start from the other place, which is, What does that person, just that person, need? And what can I provide that only I can provide? And if you do those two things over and over again, then you look at the world completely differently. Yeah, that's that is uh, really good advice. And I, um, I don't want to be careful careful not to jump over over too fast fast because because your industry in particular mm -hmm. is filled with a lot of very hardworking, well-meaning people who really want to be in a commodity business. (laughs) They like the benefits of a commodity business as long as they get picked, right? They want the deniability that comes with selling what everybody else sells and the safety that comes from knowing what the standards are as long as they get picked. So if you're making a commodity and you're getting picked and you're getting paid fairly, you should ignore this. But if you're frustrated, you got to start by saying, I'm going to give up the freedom that comes with being in the pack and I'm going to give up the security that comes from making what everybody else makes. You got to start there because otherwise you're just trying to put window dressing on the fact that deep down you'd rather be a commodity provider. You know, in any business, it doesn't matter what business you're in, um, there's a list of like rock stars that you might want to get in front of, right? Uh, You've had some success with that. I know you've told me that in the past. So can you tell us maybe some of the rock stars that you've worked with and maybe some tips on how to make that happen? Um. Yeah, it's, 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 as always with me, it's a goofy story. Um, at, at the beginning of the year, I was trying to set some goals for the year and trying to, well, for Inc. at least, and trying to go past page views and, you know, stuff like that. And I thought, you know, why don't I make this the year of seeing how many famous people I can actually, like, interview and talk to? Okay. Um, and it, like most goals, it works on multiple levels. One, it's fun, yeah. and I thought it would be interesting, and I would learn something from it. Two, Typically, people that are successful have interesting things to say, so it works great for content. Uh, three, and, and not inconsequentially, they tend to draw attention, <laughs> and so it's good. So it works on multiple levels, um, which is how all goals ought to be, because if you're trying to reach out to whoever it is in your industry you're trying to get to, you ought to have a reason, yeah. and you ought to have more than one goal. So um, what I found, I guess my biggest tip is, is that, Getting in front of people who you think you would not be able to get in front of starts with the very same thing that networking is based on. You have to figure out what you're going to do for them and why, what's in it for them. The the WIFM thing applies no matter where you are on the food chain. And so, you know, you the trick if you're, let's say you're, I don't know, trying to get in front of a venture capital guy. Mm-hmm. You can connect on that venture capital level like, hey, I need funding. You should fund me. Well, he gets a 1,000 of those. She gets a 1,000 of those. But there's other things. If you know the person, there's other things about them that they are either interested in or like to talk about 
or wish that they were known for, but don't usually get to talk about. Um, and so those are the places to me that you go chase. Right. So like one example is Venus Williams, okay. tennis player, you know, one of the best tennis players of all time. Um, but she also started a clothing line and she didn't just do it like, here's my name and someone else goes off and runs it. She actually runs the business. She designs, she reaches out to vendors, she sets up distribution agreements. She's heavily involved in the thing. Hmm. Well, she loves to talk about that. She doesn't really want to talk about tennis that much because every question about tennis has been asked or answered, yeah. but she likes talking about that. So that actually turned out to be a pretty easy get because I found something that she thought I like to talk about that. I want to promote my brand. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like talking about this because clearly she's interested in it. So it's a perfect way to kind of slide in. Um, another example, I haven't talked to him yet, but I've got it lined up. Um, if you're a heavy metal fan in any way, shape or form, you know who Metallica is. Mm -hmm. And so Kirk Hammett, the guitarist in Metallica, he has started a company where he's making effects pedals, he and another guy. So if I was trying to get Kirk on the phone to talk about music, yeah. mm, probably not going to get there. Yeah. I don't work for Rolling Stone, probably <laughs> not going to get there. But he wants to talk about his business, mm -hmm. and he likes talking about entrepreneurship, and he, he likes talking about the challenges of, hey, I've got this crazy idea, but how do I actually make it a product that people will like, and how do I sell it? He really likes that. So that turned out to be, I sent one email. And immediately got a response back, like, okay, when are you available? <laughs> so because I found the right, the right way to approach it. So the trick really is it does fall back on that networking principle. It's not what can you do for me. It's the John F. Kennedy thing. It's what can I do for you? And how can I be smart enough to come at it in a way that 50,000 other people don't come at it? But I also know that you create content. You write uh, articles for Promo Corner um, in our industry. Why do you think, uh, from a personal branding standpoint, from a business branding standpoint, why is content creation so important today? It's funny because I just submitted my most recent column last night. Mm -hmm. I have been writing for identity marketing uh, since the second issue of the magazine. I, uh, I set a precedent with the first issue, which was I missed the deadline, <laughs> and I have pretty much managed to remain consistent <laughs> in that regard. Um, when I started out, and, and boy, what was it, about 20 years ago that they began, uh, when I started out, it was very dry. It was was very basic content. It was about the industry. It was about sales. It was about marketing. And, you know, if I had to look back, and yes, I do have copies of all of my work, I would have to believe that those are some of the most deadly, dull <laughs> pieces of literature ever produced. And, and to their credit at the magazine, they left me alone. And they let this just happen. And uh, to use yet another hackneyed phrase, I found my voice. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 people tell me <laughs> that they are entertained yeah. by, uh, by some of what I write. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of uh, alleged humor <laughs> in the columns. I start off with a specific topic in mind. I tend to wander a lot. I mean, yeah, I'm getting that. <laughs> it, it goes on and on. Eventually it does circle back though. And I think I make a point in most of these content to your question. Content is crucial because otherwise, uh, boy, I, I'd be afraid to see what I might actually come up with. I'll be honest with you. It, it is often a struggle mm. to come up with fresh content. It used to be I was bi-monthly, not that there's anything wrong with that, but now I am a, I've been a monthly columnist for a couple of years now, and it, admittedly, it has gotten harder and harder to get fresh material, mm -hmm. but somehow I manage, and I manage by what is all around me. Quite often, it is the world around me, and uh, uh, boy, uh, wonderful case in point, we've just come off of the two uh, nominating conventions, how much promotional merchandise 
do you see on television at those conventions? There's a column right there. And we can spend so much time just talking about uh, all of the merchandise, all of that logoed material that passed through Cleveland and Philadelphia. So content is all around. It's really just a matter of pulling it out of the air and putting it on paper, metaphorically speaking. Thanks for watching, but wait, can you do me a favor? Please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done it already, the way to do it's right over here. And hey, if you wanna watch the last episode, check that out over here. Again, before you leave, subscribe.